like I said, bro, when you're talking about doing something special, man, it nothing comes easy. You're going to have to put a little work into it, man. But, you know, technology right now is so ahead of itself. A lot of this stuff is exper experimental. Um, we all are trying to get through this stuff, man. But shouts out to patients. Shouts out to the people that are standing by regardless. Big it up one more time for my man, Thrill the Player, Multiplat and Modest, 69 Boys. We back. We're going to yes, do sir. it again. Yes, sir. Nothing for the hey, stop. we doing? All right? Ain't nothing going to stop us, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. Now, but um, before we left, I was asking you, when that record took off, um, you know, what was that like for you and your people? Were you prepared for the instant fame? Or did it or did it come, you know, like unexpectedly and, and did you have to kind of adjust as you were playing the game? Talk about that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Because, you know, like I said, it was moving so fast. The whole uh momentum of the record, once it took off and you know, they the started getting more exposure here, more exposure there. We just never came off the road. So for us, it was all a, a, a life adjustment because going from being home every day to being on the road every day, supporting a record that is just, you know, doing what it's doing, flying here, flying there, just going all over the place, different countries, different places, man. It was a new experience for us, and we just did what we could to make the most of it in real time. What what were some of the countries that you you guys took the road to? If, if, no pun intended. Where, where, where did you <laughs> wind up going? Man, we've been to the UK. On County, and Duval County. Where did yeah, that we, take you? UK. We've been from the UK to Europe, everywhere, almost in Europe, with the exception of Spain. Um, we've been to Russia. We've been to Japan. We've been able to really see the world. You know, uh, just on the strength of just the, the, the Tootsie Roll record, the 1990 Choir album, as well as other music. But that record definitely took us across the globe and showed us different things. And talk about your footprint in Russia. Talk about right. that. Because Russia, who thought, right? Yeah. yeah, man, I think they were going, I, 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 they, I, I don't know what, how you would use the word a liberated society. I guess it was a little more liberated because they were going from the Soviet Union to just Russia. So they were having a celebration for that. And right. they invited us and maybe like eight more groups at the time. I remember one of the, I know intro was on that show, the group, the R&B group intro. intro man, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a huge show, man. It was 300,000 people at that show in the square in St. Petersburg. You couldn't Whoa. see the end of the people down the road. You just could look. You just couldn't see the end of the people. It was so many what? people. Yeah, yeah, just what? out celebrating. What was that like? Because for many, Russia is probably not even a plane ticket for them. What was that like getting off the, you know, the airport, you know, and, and, and going into Russia and, and seeing this, you know, kind of like how people feel about Cuba, you know, if they never been to Cuba for the first time, it's like, whoa, you know, how, talk about that. Oh, yeah, it definitely was like that because it was big guns, big, long guns. As soon as you get out the airport, it ain't no, it's like military everywhere, like, you know, at all the checkpoints. And it's when I got out the plane, the airport was cold and it was like walking through. It looked just like it looked in the movie when when Drago went back home to fight Rocky. Like, it looked <laughs> just like that. <laughs> So, you know, I, I mean, we, we were there for like a week and a day. And I think the last show that we did was like the fourth day, fifth day that we were there. We still had like maybe two or three days left. And I just bought I spent like sixteen hundred dollars on a one way ticket just to leave early. I just was ready to go home. Wow. Like what was what was the what was the culture like? What was just kind of the vibe? Like you said, what made you kind of uh, burn out? So quickly. Well, no, it was just, you know, when you somewhere and you can and you 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 doing things, you know, I mean, we we had been in you're in Germany for like, mm -hmm. well, I was stationed there in the military, so I was familiar with Germany and I knew places that we could go and access American customs. 
But in Russia, it was pretty much waking up, eating what they ate for breakfast all those days, which was mostly like cold cut style breakfast in, in Danishes and stuff like that. And then, you know, where are you going to go? Where are you? And then for, for us, we come from a culture where gold teeth, gold chains and all that stuff, it means something. But over there in Russia during that time, if you had bad teeth and cavities and stuff, they crowned your teeth with gold. So it was a symbol of poor, poorness. So people would look at us and say, gold teeth? Like they were asking, yeah, you got gold teeth? Uh, you, you're you rich. Why do you have gold teeth? Like, and I was, they, they would show us, hey, look, that is what we use to cover our teeth over here when we have dental problems. So it was interesting, man. But, you know, after being a young rapper, you want some strippers, some action when you're out there on the road. <laughs> and over there, it was a little bit more contained than that, Jack. Oh, the best no that. Shit, drill. Talk it. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's wild, man, because like I said, when you think of Russia, you don't always think of hip hop and bass music. And that's amazing that you guys were able to kind of go out there and rep Duval County, rep the O, and still, you know, have them cheering fans out there. Like, that must have been completely and utterly a mind kind of mind fuck, if you will. Yeah, it was it, it was humbling. It was definitely humbling, bro. Like definitely, you know, young kids from the projects got Russians like jumping. Like those people were so excited and having so much fun. Like it was a a whole row of soldiers across the front. You know, like how can you stop three hundred thousand people from pressing towards? But as soon as they were pressed towards, it was big butts, a big gun, bow, bow, get back, bow. But those people weren't caring. They were just having such a good time. The abuse didn't even matter. Right. Now talk about take us take us through the 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 era I mean or the time period in which you come back and Soul Train gives you that look and says hey we want to nominate you guys what did you yeah. think about that Hey man every time something like that you know and the funny thing about it TV was always big radio was big but anytime I would see my name in print in magazines, fanzines, that was huge to me. And then we used to look at the jet centerfold, the beauty of the week. When we was jets in middle school and high school, we had like all of them stapled up to the wall. So it was two things in jets, the jet magazine that, and I say that because Soul Train and Jet Magazine and Johnson and Johnson products at the time was just a staple for us because we were all of them went together. But the Jet Magazine, when we showed up in the back of that, we were, I think we were actually at Ebony Jet uh, on our way to their facilities when we found out we had been nominated for like three different Soul Train Awards. And that was huge for us, man. Man, talk about it, man. That, when you talk about representation, man, to know, you know, our people, our, our families up there, you know, representing it hard and, and being recognized by some of the things, like you said, that we grew up as kids watching on Saturdays, you know, that that's just amazing, man, to, to know you went from that to that. I yeah. Mean, that's just completely wild. Uh, what was it like when the combination kind of came together? I mean, at the peak, there was so much going on to come on, ride that train, uh, you know, kitty cat, kitty kitty, you know, all these things were going on at the time. Um, talk about that era and that time period that you were like, I mean, you guys were just at the top of your game. Talk about that. Oh, yeah, 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 man. Hey, long live the 90s, the, the, the era, the what I call it is the musical revolution. We're living in the viral revolution and the viral era now, but the music era is the 90s. Like, the 90s, the, well, really the late 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, like, that was the, just the era of fun. Even if it was no Limit Soldiers just rapping about something. It was still going to be, like they said, freak hoes bouncing their knees, touching their elbows. It was just everything had to be fun, booty shake driven, just party driven. Like, it, I mean, just that whole. And so everything we dropped, of course, was consistent with what we what with what we did and what we saw. We go to the, we were club. Sunday through Thursday, and then take those ideas to the studio fr uh, club Friday through Sunday, and then take those ideas to the studio Monday through Thursday. Wow, man! And that and that's you guys had your ears to the streets for real because I mean, so many dances, so many, so many 
so many places unexpectedly you would hear these songs being played, you know, and it was just amazing because, like I said, if you grew up on it, then you know about it. You know, mm -hmm. it, 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 this is, that's like, you know, mama cooking cornbread. It's just, that's just home cooking. But to hear home cooking, you know, in all parts of the country and everybody kind of embracing it, because to your point, going to the clubs, well, everybody goes to the club. Yep. You know, and that, that was just a great thing, man. Um, You know, talk about some of the things that you've seen in the record industry and some of the things that maybe, you know, maybe the people that aren't in the industry aren't privy to um, the struggles, the uh, the ups and downs, maybe 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 the facade sometimes. Talk, talk about what you, in your own words, what you see. Um, yeah. being in the yeah. man, I think just the industry itself, you know, because a lot of artists they 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 talk about this dark side of the industry, man. It's a dark side to everything. It's a dark side to not having a job, you know. Yeah. So what I see this industry as is another job. You're gonna have yeah. good days. You're gonna have bad days. You're gonna have ups. You're gonna have down. For us being independent and. A lot of people didn't realize we did Tootsie Roll independently. By the time they came to offer us a deal or to give us any love, we had already sold a million records. So it was, you know, the deals that they were putting before us at the time, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. So it, what I would say is for a lot of artists that tell their story about the dark side of the industry, what I've learned is those are the artists a lot of times that have been privy to deal with major labels where pretty much they do everything but put your clothes on for you. Um, you know, and then you got to go out there and get it. And when you try to make a living in the industry, when you when everybody has done stuff for you, then you don't really have those connects. But being independent, we had to go out and get our records put in Walmart. We had to go meet with Handelman Brothers and we had to meet with people who had Blockbuster, Circuit City, and all of these people in a chain. So to get our music in there, we had to do that. We had to go through getting the project taken out of Walmart because we didn't know, well, it was a totally clean album, but one word from Mike Mike, he said the word uh, nigga on survival of the fittest and got us pulled from all the Walmarts after all that work. So all of those kind of things that went into making our career, once, the, once it's, it leveled out, we won't say slow down once things leveled out right. you still have those relationships if you've taken care of them so you can live to fight another day as opposed to let's say had we been on an arista and they're making all the calls and they're setting up the 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 radio interviews and all that you don't you get what you make of it but when you're an artist honestly going in doing the interview how much of a relationship can you build that's a give and take relationship as an independent we would have to go up there this day go back the next week with a jacket go back the next week with some more music go back the next week let me take you to lunch and you build rapports over time that way why are relationships so strong or i mean so important in the in in the music community why does that work but why do you hear this idea or this culture of resistance to relationships? Like you hear a lot of this kind of rhetoric in dealing with, whoa, nah, man, I can't trust nobody, blah, 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 I, I rose dolo. Everything's about me, 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 me. But tell, give me your perspective on why, do you, why you feel relationships are so important. I mean, relationships are just what they are. Like, no man is an island. You understand what I'm saying? Like, uh, me, I'm the kind of person, I don't fight against common sense. And right. if there was one man in the beginning of the world, and then God said, hold on, hold on, we got to make somebody for you to chill with. That tells me that no man is meant to be an island. Right. And when, when things like that happen, it's just common sense. Relationships are king because, you know, let's take somebody like Jesse Jazz, good dude. Uh, yeah. in Orlando. Great graphics guy. I bought graphics from him early in my record company days. Shout and out to Jesse Jazz. This show is sponsored by Five Star Graphics. So shout out to you, Jesse. Keep going. No, no doubt. But 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 this interview, years later, maybe 10, 15 years later, came through a plug through Jesse Jazz right. through you. 
And right. those are relationships. They can come back to help you. So relationships are king, man, whether it's with the woman who was washing your dirty drawers before you ever took off, whether it's a relationship. I got a relationship with McDonald's. I thank them every chance I get because when I was starving, that 99 cent menu they came out with helped me to make it over the hump. All right. relationships are right. important. So, you know, and, and that's very important what you just said, bro, because once again, with all the glitz and glamour sometimes, with all the with all the rhetoric, a lot of times what we're not talking about are those relationships. How how you build them, how you how you gain insight not only into expanding, shout out to Jesse Jazz again. We we talked earlier today about, you know, expanding your circles. You know, you hear all this rhetoric sometimes about Oh, I got to make my circle small. That's ridiculous. That's like saying I'm only going to read out of one book when the mm -hmm. world is filled with books. You know, there's mm -hmm. so much more out here. There's a big, wide universe. And you would think you you probably spend the, the rest of your life building relationships, really. Like you never run out of them because you're always going to be building and rebuilding. And But why are people so resistant to it? It's just it's just it's just asinine in my opinion hey man i think it's the culture that we living in in the world that we live in today salute to everybody out there that feel that way because i do understand where you're coming from because most most entertainers a lot of us especially if we rap come from the streets and in the streets you got to keep your circle small because your best friend will take you out just to be with your baby mama so right. i understand that but when right. it comes to business and that's what i've always tried to get people to understand even in my hometown i love them and I tell them all the time because some of them might joke with me. Hey, man, you was on BET doing a split and I'll do it again because I can separate business from personal. I tell them all the time. Let me tell you something, bro. I don't care who your favorite rapper is. I don't care who he is. Put him in a room and put him in there with a bunch of people and let Mickey Mouse walk in that room and see who's going to get all the attention. Right. Mickey Mouse in a costume. You know why? Because it's the entertainment business and because people want to be entertained. People save their money up all year to go to Disney to see a fantasy, a big castle, ducks walking down the street, mouse walking down the street, Donald, uh, the, uh, Goofy, the big dog. These are things that you don't see every day. These are things that people save up all year to take their family to. So when I hit the stage, I'm not going to be walking across the stage with my pants hanging down on my ass, rapping back and forth, trying to be hard and show you how cool i am no i'm finna do splits i'm finna jump i'm finna flip backwards i'm finna set fire i'm gonna do whatever i can to make sure these people know that they money that they spent on these tickets was well appreciated talk about it talk about i mean you're taking it back to the old school with that because you know there's so many legends in in music history just in general who feel the same damn way but when you come when you pay your harder money that's you you're asking for a performance um and a lot of times you know it's very difficult to see sometimes you know the the kind of balance that's needed because for some people there's an argument to be made uh you know well all these piles in the world why you why you shucking and jiving and then on the other side of it you know with all these problems in the world why are you fearing why are you stressing so hard why are you focused on what's wrong, why don't you look at some of the things that are right? And you just you just made a great point that, look, we all got gifts, and if you ain't doing your gift, that's where the wrong begins. Period. You Period. Know, if, you, if, you, if your gift in life is to make people happy, to bring smiles to their face, make them feel like, hey, man, just for this few minutes, you forget about all that shit. I mean, that's a gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, with a gift is is being able to grab a microphone and say, "Hey, come on, y'all. Whether it's let's do the tussy slide or let's do the tussy roll, that's right. involving other people. But even if you listen to the culture, a lot of times, a lot of cats they don't know how to divide the flex from what people need to survive as well. God right. didn't give us the gift for us. God didn't give us the gift for us. He gave it for us to bless other people with. Just Whoa. like an artist, like Picasso. He don't paint pictures. He ain't paint pictures to leave them in his house. Those pictures are sold across the world at big prices because he made those pictures to make other people feel good. And so many rappers 
and artists need to understand, bro. I tell you what, if your name MC Flamethrower and you wear red flames all the time and people scream for you when you got on them red flames, take them flames off and go to the 7-Eleven and don't have that on and just say your name Edward and you're going to do an interview and see how they feel about you. Nobody cares about the you and you personally. They care about how you make them feel. So right. get busy making them feel how you give them what they want and they will give you what you want. Talk about it, my brother. Talk about it. And the segue, I, you gave a perfect segue here because what do you feel in your in your opinion? What do you feel Florida? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's just Duval. Maybe it's just Hillsborough. Maybe it's just Orange County. But what do you think the cities, you know, maybe it's Tallahassee too. You know, what, what do you think Florida can do to kind of end this, you know, stalemate and start as an entirety? Like when you think of California, uh, when you think of Georgia, you know, shit, Chicago. Uh, what do you think Florida can do moving forward now that we're stepping into a brand new year? What are some of the things that if you could, if, if you could be the governor of Florida, <laughs> Uh, and the governor of entertainment, music, what would be some of your suggestions that you would suggest, if you, if you could, that would improve the unity, the cohesiveness, the, co the collective, and, you know, whether it's young, old, all of us, what do you think could improve the situation? Well, I think, you know, as grown people, we have to look at the situation for what it is. Young adults, think different than kids yeah. and uh, older adults think different than young adults. Right. So I think, it, uh, you know, me having a long drawn out conversation with a kid about not doing kid things when they're a kid to me makes it the, the grown person, the idiot, because a kid is going to be a kid. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being said, the advice I would give to these kids out here today knowing that they barely want to hear anything somebody got to say anyway is this the best advice i can give to somebody is get to the mountaintop that you're trying to get to and then if you want to get there this generation seems to respect the fact that you're there if you already driving a phantom if you already got the chains on they may listen to you a little bit more other than that get busy to going the way you're trying to go because i'm tired of seeing well worthy OGs and philanthropists and people that are trying to help people. I don't watch Martin Luther King die. I don't watch Tupac Shakur die. I don't watch Bob Marley die. And a lot of my brothers and sisters still around here doing the same dumb shit. And those people was trying to pour into us then. So, you know, don't end up broke trying to save people who won't listen. Help who you can, but you got to stay focused on getting to your destiny so you can be like a LeBron and say, okay, look, couldn't help everybody, but I'm going to build a school over here so everybody who want to help can come, and now I ain't got to try to waste my time helping people who don't want to be helped. Man, and bro, you just dropped several bombs on the city right there, man, because at the end of the day, that is so much the truth, man. The truth is, you got to build the place, like you said. People will come. Mm -hmm. Build a church, people will come. Yeah. Build a restaurant, people will come. People get hungry. But if you build nothing, ain't nobody coming. You yeah. know, and, uh, you know, uh, one thing that I'm very grateful for, you know, and like it's, you know, one of the greatest conversations was I, which I recorded it when we first talked, uh, you know, because that was very enlightening, very, for our first conversation, I was just like, man, this, this guy, he gets it. He gets it. And, uh, you know, I'm alluding to say that, you know, sometimes it's you never know what's going on until it actually happens. And you said earlier about Tootsie Roll. That wasn't something you thought was was going to do what it do. I mean, you really probably maybe like many artists weren't even into it. You know, all right, we'll do it. I mean, you did it, it's yours, but it's not your baby. And, right. and you realize, you know, it's the very thing that will take you to that top of that mountain, man. And you gotta, you gotta trust the process, and you just gotta go. 
you got to think bigger than what you have in your hand sometimes. You know, all the time. But all be the time. appreciative that you have the hand. You know, mm-hmm. you're all a balance, right? You got to, you want bigger than what you have in your hand, but you still got to appreciate the hand. And, yeah. um, and um, you know, like I said, when I put the show together, man, you know, I thought, I, I, of course I wanted you on this show just just on GP because I know you're from Duval, but you represent the sound of Orlando. And we need to be talking about people that represent that sound. This show ain't enough. It needs right. to be talked about much more than this. You know, right. because if we're talking about a city in which a lot of this identity is, is based on people that don't live here sometimes, you know, we need a space in which our people can talk about those good times, those those times in which, you know, was there and, and still going on today. Like you got new stuff going on today. That needs to be talked about. Right. All day long, because you represent the sound here. All day, all day. Well, see, one of the things you said that's important is what can be done to bring it back to Florida. I think if you look at when you go to Cali, I don't care where you at in Cali, because we go to Cali a couple times a year, spend a couple weeks out there just driving from Sacramento all the way down to San Diego. I don't care what station you put that radio on. You're going to hear all the new hits. But you know what else you're going to hear? You're going to hear Snoop Dogg. You're going to hear Warren G. You're going to hear Tupac Shakur. You're going to hear the best of Death Row blended into all of that. Um, You know, and hold on about that, man. I got calls. Everybody calling. But 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 the thing about it is Tootsie Roll is the longest running single in the history of the Billboard rap charts. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. What did he just say? Let's go to the tape. Breaking news never stops. Turn this motherfucking sound up, man. Blast this is to turn the whole this up. You say that one more time, my dude. Say it. Oh, yeah. Tootsie Roll is the longest running single in the history of the Billboard rap charts by far. It is also the second longest running single on in the history of any chart on uh, that's rap, rock, got any singles chart. And it is also the for until Macklemore Thrift Shop came out, which I didn't know was considered hip hop, but they Billboard said it is. Tissy Roll was the number one rap single. They just did the top twenty, the top one hundred rap songs in the history of the twenty five year Billboard rap charts. Tootsie Roll is, it was number one, but Macklemore knocked it to number two. So anywhere you go through Florida, that's Florida. When you open up Billboard right now and it says, what's the top 100 songs of all time? I think Missy was number three. Drake was number 12. All these songs, but Tootsie Roll is number two, only behind Macklemore. You shouldn't go to any city in this state and then not be playing the record. It, it, oh. As a recurrent on any radio station. But when you when you go to Atlanta, when you go to you're going to hear Yin Yang, you're going to hear Outkast, you're going to hear people that people may say, "Uh, I don't know if they're still as relevant today. It doesn't matter. The records is what define the city, the sound define the state. And in Florida, when 69 boys been sticking with this bass, I watched every rapper from here and I love all of them. I watched them try to sound like L.A. I watched them try to sound like New York. I watched them try to sound like Atlanta. 69 boys held it down for our state. Our state sound is bass. That's what we represented. That's what we will continue to represent. Sure, we'll blend it over with different sounds, but we're never going to be caught guilty trying to sound like for the past 10, 15 years. Florida has sounded like everything but Florida. Salute to every artist that has made it, but our pride goes back to where we come from and what we endorse. Right. Now, now, bro, you you just dropped you just dropped several bombs on the city, man. You just told everybody at the end of the day, the sound should be playing on radio all over the state. <laughs> on GP. Bro, bro, let me just say this too. Like you gonna tell me in Orlando radio that Star 94.5 don't have time, don't have four minutes for Tootsie Roll 
Don't have four minutes for Luke. It's your birthday. Don't have two, four minutes for two live crew move something. These are records that made the state. I don't care where your program director comes from. If they got a program director job in Florida and no Luke and ain't no 69 boys in the playlist, even as a recurrent, but I hear Jodeci and 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 and, and, and other artists that are recurrent, I don't diss those artists. I say program directors control city. You don't believe cities. You don't believe me? Go to a city with high violence and then turn the radio on and see what the program director's playing. I bet you you're going to hear high violence. Go to a city with a lot of babies, like the 60s. My grand, my granddaddy had a baby from my grandmama and the lady down the street and the lady across there. You know why? Because all you heard was the Temptations, Smokey Robinson. The, I, the They programmed the city to love, to make love. But if you program them to kill, steal, and rob, that's what they're going to do. If you program them to party, that's what they're going to do. So it's on the program directors and the DJs who are the local program directors to make room for stuff that made them classy, you know. But a lot of times for DJs and for programmers, it's about looking cool and feeling cool to people who they feel they want to look cool and feel cool to. But Billboard did the article that said 69 Boys is out doing big in longevity. Billboard did the comparison 69 boys 64 weeks on the rap chart biggie 31 weeks on the rap chart like but when you come to orlando and different cities you'll hear hypnotized or big papa as a recurrent but the number two song in rap chart history no the number one song in the longest running song and the number two song in rap chart history you won't hear that and that is what's always going to cause florida to be behind the eight ball and for people to feel like that we've been left out because the people who programming it is leaving out DJ Magic Mike. How we ain't got no DJ Magic Mike records playing on commercial radio in Orlando. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy, blasphemy for, for the, the programmers and the mixed DJs and the street DJs who don't support. How in the hell? How in the hell? When most of them, that just doesn't make sense to me. This slap your bitch ass in the face moment has been sponsored by Thrill the Player. <laughs> he just dropped some bombs on everyone. This is facts. These are undisputed facts. When you go into Atlanta, you are listening. I don't care if you're old, young, whatever. You gonna know about some outcasts. I don't care when they come out. You gonna hear them. Oh, and you're going to hear that old So So Death catalog, too. You're right. going to hear it. You're going to go to Detroit and ain't listening to Motown? <laughs> one Motown song? Come on, man. Come it, on. it is. You know, it makes me, like I said, it makes me really, and I know I ain't alone. There's a lot of people in the city. They've been quiet. They, they, they accept it. You know, what are you going to do? But for me, my militant ass, that shit made me mad. Because how are you going to be in a city with no representation? You know, I don't care uh, whether you plan some of the new artists. That's awesome, too. We should have new artists being played. But what about, which they barely play, but if you're playing that, no one's taking that away from you. But how are you not going to play the history of this place, neither? How are you not going to, like you said, no Cheetah Records? No Magic Mike? In one like, 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 like when you're a DJ and you call yourself a power DJ and you go to other cities or other DJs come to your city and they don't hear Magic Mike, they, and they go on TikTok and Tootsie Roll is one of the most played songs on TikTok and they don't hear that, Please, DJs, you cannot tell me you think another power DJ respects you. You can't because Funk Flex drops 50 cent old hits. He drops everybody music from his area. He makes sure they get endorsed. Florida is not just Khaled. I love Khaled. Khaled from right in Orlando. But, but, but let's be honest. Oh, 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 oh. you just broke some more news. We, we have to take a moment to, to breathe. 
What did he just say? Breaking news never stops. Turn this motherfucking sound up, man. Blast this is to turn the whole this up. Where's Khaled from? Hey man, Cal I met Khaled in Orlando. I, I, oh! now, I don't know if that's his origin, origin, but I met him in Orlando as a young DJ, and we would be meeting him over at Ripping Records, giving him records and, and all that stuff. And I and I love what Khaled do. He go and he bring other artists from the culture to Florida, blending the culture. That's a part of it. I'm not saying he shouldn't be saluted, but I'm saying if you only playing Khaled and you ain't playing Magic Mike and you ain't playing Luke and you ain't playing Tussie Roll. That's four records right there. We ain't going to get into whoop, there it is, because that's been played at the World Series and everywhere else. But what I'm saying is, just like programmers used to make time to put a four-minute Kirk Franklin record into 24-hour rotation because it was necessary after hearing, I'm going to beat them guts out. I'm going to holler at you later. Now, come on, let's go party. Let's go dance. Let's go piss it up. Okay, now after we heard that, let's take four minutes to stomp. Hey, maybe I just clap my hands and stomp. That's that's programming. But right now, Orlando radio, a lot of radio everywhere sounds like a blend of today mixed with their favorite records from the 90s. And that hurts us as a market, a state. If we cannot show the growth to where it includes Bobby Smurder and DJ Khaled, where it includes Nas and the 69 Boys, where it includes Biggie and Luke, where it includes Snoop and Khaled. No, 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 no. It needs to be all of that because we can never lose We can never lose our identity by just giving it away trying to be somebody else. This go somewhere and sit your crazy ass down moment has been sponsored by 69 Boys. Where they speak the truth. You just spoke truth to power. This is what we're talking about, brother. That is the truth. That is not that is not to be messed with. Because you know it. I know it. And there's a lot of people out here that do know it. So who the hell are these people representing? <laughs> you know, once again, there's a lot more of our age, older, and people that are maybe in their 30s who respect history, you know? And I know, I, I can't even say that young people don't respect history. If you're not teaching it in school, then how the fuck are you on right cursing? You know what I'm saying? Like you can't blame them for something. These people ain't even teaching it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, my brother. I, when, it, when it comes to the entertainment and period, when it comes to music, the DJs are the, the top of the hierarchy. They're the top of the food chain. So if your city party scene suck, look at the DJs. If your cities uh, uh, ain't together, look at the DJs. You got DJs who will say, okay, I'm going to run with this click because they paying me and won't play this click right or I'm going to invite this clip. I'm not one to tell people to waste their whole life waiting on people to work together because it can all work together even if you don't like people. But what I will say is this. I can understand going to Miami maybe and not hearing a Magic Mike record. I don't understand that, but I should never come to Orlando and not hear a Magic Mike record. Or that should never happen. Or that should be a prerequisite on the program. On the program's directors got dang on resume. If you don't know you need to do that, you don't get the job. And, and here's my point with that. That's I just named 12 minutes worth of records. If you play the 69 boy record, whether it's Kitty Kitty, Woo any of the platinum records we got, we sold over 35 million records. So if you and we got 15 platinum plaques and eight gold plaques, all RIAA certified. The Christmas song is not because we didn't certify it. Dick in your life. Is because we never said those type records we just put out, and those are fan favorites. But we still got 15 platinum plaques and eight gold plaques. And I'm not counting, that's not counting jock jams and all these other things that we've doubled up. And I could count again to say we've got 23 platinum plaques, but I won't do that. But here's the thing if you took those four records, that is 12 minutes out of your daily playlist, you still have 23 hours 
and 48 minutes to play commercials and everything else you want to play, but you have salvaged your state by keeping some type of res representation in the playlist. This shut the fuck moment Shut the fuck up moment has been brought to you by Thrill the motherfucking player. He's dropping bombs on the entire state right now. If you are not listening to what the hell he's saying, um, you're missing completely the big picture. Uh, that is exactly right. I mean, why stop there? 12 minutes? I can give you a beat master Clay D, Prince Raheem. You yes, know, uh, Disco yes, City Boys? Yes, sir. Why yes, is that record not playing? Like, yes, there's sir. so many people who are not being represented. I mean, not represent. You don't have to necessarily have went platinum, but like most cities, if you go to their city, you will hear at some point, at, maybe it's one in the morning. I don't know what that looks like. Maybe it's five in the morning. But 24 hours the entire day? Not even, you don't got a half hour to say our city got something to say too in that, in that wonderful speech Andre 3000 said at the Source Awards, the South got something to say. You, we, ain't got, we ain't got nothing to say. All these other people got everything to say about our lives and we ain't got nothing to say and we live here. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. That's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. When you're when your place does not represent you, but they tax you, they want you to spend money on nation. They want you to go out to their events. They want you to, 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 to support their functions, but yet they're not representing the people. They're not telling our story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and there's a lot of artists. And, and I want to say this to all the artists out there. Cause I don't, I'm not bashing DJs and programmers. I'm just saying the facts. They they should want more for Florida. And these are people that have earned it on the field. I don't want no charity. I don't want no charity. Neither do the other artists. Luke don't deserve no charity. He earned it on the field. Talk about you know it. I mean? they, it's too much. It's too many DJs out here, Kobe Bryant artists. And what I mean by that is they got their favorite pick over here as Jordan. They got their second favorite as LeBron. And they act like it ain't a bunch of Kobe's out here that are relevant. You can't just jump from Jordan to LeBron. There was a Kobe Bryant. And you can't just forget about him. And when that's what's going on in these different cities, they're playing everybody but the Kobe's of the market. And hey, listen, you got to be encouraged and you got to do like we always do and always did. When Bartell left the market, we said, man, we got to find a way to stay in touch with the DJ. We love being on the radio, but Let's come up with this record, Dick, in your life. We'll take it around to all the clubs because you got to stay in these streets. I'll tell any artist that, yes, it's good to get that crossover success, but these DJs, you can help them. You know, you can go to every one of their events. You can spend all your money to support their night. You can be in front of the DJ booth. Oh, yeah, this is my DJ. This is my dog. I'll be at all his events. And if you think he's going to play you or show you some love at your shit, <laughs> okay then asking why they're not playing the biggest rap song in the country uh, on their playlist right here in Florida. I'm not saying, you know, much love to DJ Nasty. I love Nasty. Nasty, you got to open that playlist up, bro. Nasty came to town with Khaled and called me and said, hey, look, man, we're trying to get you on the show with Beyonce, with Beyonce now. I love him for that. I ain't knocking that. But whether it's DJ Nasty or any of the other DJs on the radio, if you ain't playing no motherfucking Magic Mike on the radio in Orlando, how can you call yourself a DJ? Not once, not once a, a day, I mean once a week. I'm talking about once a day. Magic Mike, when I go to Canada, people talk about Magic Mike being from Orlando. When I go to California, people talk about, oh, wasn't he the first guy in Orlando to dot, 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 dot? And then if they came here and then they don't hear it, then they say, well, damn. No wonder, bro, ain't out here putting out music to go to the world. They don't even got this back at home the way they're supposed to. But I could go on with that, with that for hours. I'm going to just say this. We got to do better. We, we got also got to do better. Man, I could talk hours about no, no, radio. No, no. But, 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 but I've been on a, I'm, I'm a radio DJ. 
with, with good market shares in every market I do radio in. So I can speak on it. I'm just not knocking people. But any city I've been to, I've taken Florida with me because that's my job. Right. 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 I mean, it's it, it's like going to Cleveland and not hearing bone once. <laughs> you, that'll never happen. You, it's not going to happen. Going to Chicago and not hearing Twister. We still hear do or die when we in Chicago. I mean, how could you go to Chicago and not hear Twister or Common? That's <laughs> or Kanye. <laughs> or Kanye. <laughs> Those are the things that make them proud. Like, you understand what I'm saying? So, but, 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 but we've always had DJs that want to, that, that remind me of the guy that chased the girl that don't want them. Right. When they got a girl right here that loved them and want right. to be with them, but they rather waste their time chasing a girl that don't want them. Right. And that don't make you hot. That only makes you relevant until they want to pick somebody else. And then they say, oh, well, we ain't rocking with up no more. We're going to go over here and rock with the new DJ. It's all, it's all a sport. So, you know, it you, is what it is. You ain't telling no lies, man. And and that once again, this is why I call it the Sound of Orlando show. Because like I said, you are part of that sound. You are telling your story. It's how it's supposed to be told. You shouldn't feel no kind of way about that. A lot of people feel the same way. You know, we're not talking about it. This is one moment where we are, where we're actually saying it yeah, like it is. If if oh, yeah. if we if we live in a place and we've lived there long enough and we we've done some great things in this city, then radio should reflect that. The club should reflect that. Uh, media, TV should reflect that. We should be hearing more conversations about what the fuck we doing than what we oh, no hear about everybody else doing outside of here. No doubt, no doubt. And this is my thing. When it comes to an artist that does the work, like I mean, it's a lot of players in the NBA, but everybody can't be LeBron, right? But come on, these facts I'm talking to you about right now are Googleable. We know who Magic Mike is, we know who Uncle Luke is, we know who 69 Boys is, and if you don't Google it, you'll see. We, unless your favorite rapper is Macklemore, there is no record higher on the charts. Not anybody you hear on Orlando radio or Jacksonville Radio when it comes to the top rap songs of all time. I'm not saying that to boast. I'm just saying, what do artists have to do to give DJs and programmers something to work with? Any programmer should be able to go and argue with the people upstairs that, hey, look, this is the most popular song in rap chart history. How can we not add this? But right. you, you got to have a spine to do that. You have to have the, the, the first of all, you have to have the knowledge of the history of the music that you're listening to. But then after that, you got to have the spine to do that. So, right. hey, no, I'm not going to not all the fans that support Toots to Zero. Every year we remake it for the ESPN National Cheerleading Competition. People ask me all the time, how does the record just keep reinventing itself? Every year we're in Jersey recutting it with different cheerleading teams with their names in the record. So now that's another 13, 12-year-old class that gets to know the record. And we're grateful for it. But I'm saying when artists put in the work, when they, where was you when they was shooting in the gym to become Kobe? Right. You can't do that for every artist, but for the artists that earned it, you right. should be able to do that for them. How about it, man? This get the hell out of here moment has been brought to you by my man, Thrill the Player, and he just dropped bombs on the entire city, man. This is what we're talking about, man. This is this is the this is the idea. This is the model. We need this conversation. We need we need your insight. We we need more people stepping up to the plate that are telling it like it is. Because for a long time, you know, it's just been it. We've been on mute. We've been on silent. We've been you know a lot of people have just been accepting things for the way they are. And I believe there's power in numbers. If we continue to push this culture forward, push this conversation forward, and keep bringing people with like minds, at some point, they're going to be surrounded and going to have to make some changes. Because oh, this yeah. can't go on. You, you know, advertising dollars are everything. And, you, you know, at the end of the day, as long as they continue to misrepresent or not even represent, you know, the state, the city, I mean, 
it, something's got to give. At some point, something's got to give. Something's got to give. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've always I've never had a problem speaking truth to power. That's what got me a job at 102 Jams back in the days. But when I gave, when they gave me a shot over there, I thought it was my duty to pull the city in with me. Local rappers, everybody trying to be heard because Ground Zero has a voice. Ground Zero run, Ground Zero run the club night. Yeah, the DJs show up with a expensive this, expensive that, but it's built off the back of $7 and $10 clients that's at the door and now $20. And all the DJs are in Florida but want to be from New York. That shit ain't going to work. If you in New York like Pro Style, then you are in there. You're willing to put your money where your mouth is and go to the culture and become a part of that culture. But being in Florida, acting like you from New York, that ain't going to make you cool in New York. You need to take care of the people here that have the potential to take care of you. Man. And then it all reciprocates. Because guess what? New York is a big pond. Everybody want to go jump in that lake and be a small fish in a big pond where if you the man in Florida and you rep in Florida, everybody from New York got to come to Florida. So now you the big fish in a, in a pond, in a smaller pond, but you're still the big dog. No matter what, the people still going to have to come and deal with you. But they're never going to deal with you if they see you don't respect the people who help build the scene that you making money and eating off of. They're going to smile in your face just like we do in the dope game. Oh, for real, dog? Oh, yeah, that's what's up, my boy. As soon as you leave. Oh, man, you a fuck nigga. He don't do nothing he say. He don't represent nobody before himself. Man, everybody was at his club night and he don't spend no love for nobody. He won't even come to nobody release party, but he was over there at Fabulous shit. He was over there at Jada Kiss shit and, and Jada Kiss ain't spent one dime on no club night. Ain't bought you no bottle of Hennessy, nothing, but just to get up in the picture. That, no, man, it's backwards. It's ass backwards. But it's all good. It's how they play because I rely on the streets to get me to where I got to go, whether it's Daytona with Tennessee Road. That record started at the streets. And Bartell, who was a street dude, Cedric Hollywood, we was all street dudes. We put the music out and we let the streets judge it. They did and so be it. Same thing with Magic Mike. Same thing with Luke, JT Money. A lot of people who deserve to be heard. This go play somewhere I'm busy moment has been brought to you by Thrill the Mother Player tonight. Just tell it like it is. We're just having a conversation. We're just talking. This is what's going on, man. This is some real stuff, man. I hope y'all are listening, people. Because, you know, this is this is what needs to be said this is what needs to be talked about um we need to have adult conversations when it comes to our thing called hip-hop music um especially when it comes to florida hip-hop music this is what we do man this is what we should be doing um and let's segue into your new music talk about uh we didn't have much time to talk about on the last segment but talk about some of the things that you're doing now and um what we can expect from you in the future. Hey, listen, man, I'm glad you said that because I do. I got to get back to my kids, but I want to say this. Y'all listen, 69 Boys has never asked for charity. We're dropping the new music in January. All I'm asking, well, first of all, we got new music out now. You can stream it. It's One's called MILFs, and that's Mom's Intelligent, Lovable, Fun, Sexy. MILFs run the world. We wanted to take a, a, a connotation from the streets because, of course, you know, MILFs normally stand for Moms I Like the mm. But we switched it. Moms, Intelligent, Lovable, Fun, Sexy, and that they run the world. That's streaming now. We also got a new single with Uncle Luke and JT Money, J Creek, DJ Nisi D called Junk in the Trunk. That's another song that's on the album. Watch for the new 69 Boys album, The Notorious Bass. And where Watch for new music. Just follow our Instagram page at Responsible Recordings or Official 69 Boys at Thrill the Player, at Fast Cash 69 Boys, or our Facebook fan page, 69 Boys, because we are posting music from the new project already, and come January when we drop this party up, hey, if you like the record, support it. If you don't, let it, hit send us a message. Let us know how we can make it better, because we're going to be at every fish fry, every pool party, everywhere, just like we was with Tootsie Roll, promoting this record and promoting this music. It's our destiny. It's in our bloodline. It's our life. And we're going to be there doing it. We're going to be there pushing it. 
man, thrill. You you never cease to amaze me, man. Um, great intellect, great conversation. Uh, this is the kind of conversation, like I said, that our people need to continue to have, man. You know, you know, you are the voice of of the city in a real way. You're always welcome on this show, bro. You got something going on, please come on the show, brother, and, and represent it, bro. I, you're respected here, and uh, continue to do the great work that you do. Uh, but before I let you go, I got to ask you just one last question, um, just to lighten things up. What is the craziest thing you've seen on tour? Oh, and you could just say one crazy, funny, hilarious story. What is that? Man, man, it's so many. Oh, my goodness, man. It's this so one, many stories. But, but honestly, the craziest ones, they aren't funny stories. Like this one story, this one time we in South Carolina and dude is like, uh, hey, man, what's up, man? I just got out of prison. We at the armory doing a show at the armory. And we, it, dude like, hey, man, I just got out of prison, bro. This is my, my, this is my brother throwing the show. So he back in the, they had us in a weight room. We was, that was the dressing room. We was there like two hours before the show because we had to do that show, but we had to be on another show that night in Oklahoma City. I think this was in South Carolina. So we doing this show and they did it in this armory and everybody keep asking us, why they do the show here? They know can't nobody smoke in here. Nobody's going to cook because people like to get cut. So the dude comes back after the show. They had a nice crowd, but I don't think it was who they wanted, what they wanted. Man, the dude comes out and he say, hey, man, my brother lost that money tonight. We going to need you to get that back. Everybody looked at this dude like, what? Man, we just went out there and gave our soul on that show. I tell you what. He said, oh, y'all think I'm playing? Y'all think I'm playing? So we went and got in the van. He had a van parked on the side. So he goes and gets in his van. He talking to people. He talking to his lady. She in the truck. Then he jumps out. He got a toolbox. We don't know what's in the box. So he like, oh, I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all. So by now, no, 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 no. The police hadn't walked out yet because they had armed security in the building. But as soon as he pulled the toolbox up, all you saw was maybe if it was if it was eight people in the car 10 guns went up oh i'm talking God. about everything from machine guns sawed off shotguns two nine we had everything in there ready and when he like it was just gun if we would have shot all those guns in that 15 passenger that it would have blew everybody eardrums but we were so young and dumb but all we knew was we were being threatened and we wasn't finna go out like that right when he saw those guns the police walked out the door just in time and was like, hey, what's going on? With and, and and his wife was pleading with him or whoever she was, please, please don't do this. And we just was sitting there like amazed. Like, how, how could this go down? Then another story, man, real quick, we was in Georgia, backwoods, Georgia, somewhere. And dude, like, we, we had rooms. We never stay in these hotels that have outside. But this town was so small, all they had was a day's in. We was only going to sleep there for three hours because we always get up early to get to the next city early. Right. Man, we hear all these girls coming back. I'm like, nah, I ain't feel like dealing with no girls tonight. I'm just going here, go to sleep. And I had my, I, I had a chop. I had an AK in the room. Uh, the next thing I hear, at first we hear girls walking by, and then all I hear is boom, 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 and they're like, oh shoot, he's shooting in the room. The girl's boyfriend had came back to the hotel after our concert and was mad that his ex girlfriend was in the room with one of our roadies, wasn't even in the room with the group, and shot up the hotel the days wow. in. And the police came, and it ended up being the police chief's son <laughs> that was doing the shooting. But he knew what he felt like he could get away with. But he didn't get away with shooting up the days in, but he felt like he could. So we done seen a lot of crazy stuff out here on this road, man. Man, that is hilarious, man. Damn! Yo, give it up one time for my brother from another mother, man, representing the O, representing Duval County. Give it up for two. Mm -hmm. My man, real, the player. Let's go. Sit your nine, boys. Base King, let everybody know. Go get his work, man. Look him up on the gram. Please support this brother. He represents our history, our story, and our sound, man. 
Go check that man, man. Thank you again for coming on, man. We did. It Thank you for having me. Yep. Hey, man. Look, this is what we're doing, man. Shouts out to everybody who's still on to this day, man. Shouts out to my man, Big Lou, Big Earl, Big Lou. What's going on, Jesse Jazz? Alfredo, Ricky, what's good, man? Shouts out to Rick, man, for helping out tonight. And as always, he's my partner in crime doing all the videos. Shouts out to Jesse Jazz. Jesse Jazz, sponsored by Five Star Graphics on the check-in. Shouts out to my man, Work. Work, what's good, me? Shouts out to everybody who tuned in for this last segment, man. It was a great time hanging out with my brother from another mother. Thrill the player, man. This is what we do, man. It's all about the sound of Orlando. Tomorrow we'll be back before the weekend. If you know, you better know. It's all about us, man. Old Town Sound. Let's go.